Hi, so today we're going to work on um, making some towels that hang on your oven range um, with a button. They're really kind of cute. I'll, I'll show you a picture later, but first I want to tell you what kind of materials you're going to need to get started. Um, I have three different cotton materials. Um, the, the first that I used it was really kind of it was so soft after you wash it when you first use it it's kind of stiff but it's called terra and it's 50 percent bamboo and 50 percent cotton it's um it's on the internet you'll have to search for it and i i got quite a few of these because i wanted to make a set for my kitchen and that's the first one it takes two of them you can see i have two of each of these because it basically takes two to make one one towel and the other the second is from knit picks it's called cotlin and it's part cotton 70 percent tanguis cotton and 30 percent linen and this is a very nice it softens up too once you wash it linen becomes very soft when you wash it it becomes nice and, and drapey so you can use this with these two the terra and the cotlin we would use a size six needle and i i haven't put it on because you and i are going to start with the sugar and cream but these two the smaller weights are going to use the size six so i'm going to push those out of the way for now and the one that's very easy to acquire is the sugar and cream. You can get these at Michael's or Joann's. You can get it at Amazon. You can get it online basically anywhere. But if, if you're still shopping, you can get this at Michael's. It's just sugar and cream. And I think it's 100% cotton. Yeah, it's 100% cotton. It's very stiff, but it's it's also absorbent which is nice i've made holiday towels especially for halloween i've made towels for the oven with this and then i have buttons that you can get at um, amazon and i'll put links and things on both the webs my website and down here in the bottom so for today we're going to start with the sugar and cream with sugar and cream and again i have two of them with sugar and cream you have to use a little bit bigger needle so i'm using a size seven needle and this is my interchangeable set so i've gone ahead and, and connected it up and we will start i'll put the pattern and everything on the website give you links to all of that later but this will give you a chance to go ahead you can stop the video now and and shop for your yarn get your yarn and once you get your yarn come on back and and we'll start the pattern for these they're beautiful thanks happy knitting Okay, so I'm, I'm going to show you a few little things. Um, this is the yarn that we're going to use, the sugar and cream and a size 7 needle. I'm going to push those aside. These are the buttons. Um, hang on, I'm going to close the curtain. It takes me a while because I have my second knee done and I'm just a little bit slow getting up. Okay, so these are the buttons that I've used to make my towels. They're a 40 millimeter. I put the link on both the blog and I will try and get it on the video. These are really nice. Um, they show up great. I don't have I don't have it on this one. I still have to get it sewn on. But once you get it on with your little buttonhole. They just look real pretty. They just look real great. Um, this is one of the towels that I finished. And you can see the three different stitches. Well, actually four. I'm sorry. This is a stockinette. It's just plain knit. Then this is the first stitch that we learned. This is a, a stockinette stitch, which is a knit and purl. Then the seed stitch, knit and purl. And then we finish with the same stitch that we started with. After that, we just kind of decrease 
until we get to a little loop that we can wrap over our oven handle. And it's not terribly stiff. It's, it's a nice, but it's stiffer. Once they get washed, oh, they are just soft and drape so nicely. So let's go ahead. Oh, the other thing I wanted to show you was my knit counter, my row counter. I, I basically just use this on, I put it on my middle finger because if it's on this finger, my thumb, it kind of gets in the way of my needle. So I keep it here. You can keep it any, any one that you're comfortable with. But I like this because this big silver button, when I click it, it advances. You can kind of see it advancing. And when I press the smaller button, it erases everything and sets it back to zero. So I like this because if you have the ones where you have to twist them, uh, um, they're, they're just a little bit more fussy. You have to put your, your material down. I have one here. Let me show you. So that's the old one. And this is very nice because it, a lot of people like to slip them on their needles when they're finished and then it stays. But you can also do that with this. You just slip it on your needle and it'll stay. So the problem I found with this one is I have to put my knitting down, I have to advance it, set it down, pick up my knitting and get started again. With this, I can knit, smack it, knit, smack it, knit, and keep going. So I like these, I put a link for them. Um, you can get them from knitting companies one at a time, and they're quite expensive for one. I believe they were almost $9 just for one. Well, I got a set of six for a little bit more than that. And so you can share with friends. You can go together with friends and, and, and share if you don't want to keep all six. I, I gave several of mine away, but I have three that I kept because I use them on all my projects and like I said when I'm done with a project and I want to work on something else I'll go ahead and slip this on my needle and keep it with the project so that I keep the number of the project the row that I'm working on so that's kind of a nice thing too okay I'm going to get started with this our pattern says that we need to cast on 64 stitches and I really, I, I, this is my go-to cast on, and it's the cast on that I taught you when we first started knitting. There are other stitch knitting cast ons that you can do. If you're comfortable with those, go ahead and use it. I like this because it gives a nice edge to my knitting, but it's also just a very stretchy, nice knit. So we're going to go ahead and cast on 64 stitches. Now remember, I'm using sugar and cream and so I'm using a bigger needle. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video and see see what's nice, I can just, I can click, 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 and keep track of what I've done on this so much easier than you can on the twisty ones. With the twisty ones, I'd have to put this down, pick this up, twist it, pick it back up and get going again. So I like this because I can, I can just tap in my number and I don't have to put knitting down. I don't have to get um, distracted from what I'm doing. So go ahead and get your 64 stitches cast on and we'll be back. Okay, so um, I've gone ahead and knit the first row, but I want to show you a really nice way to make a pretty edge on your knitting. This pattern calls for us to knit six rows, so this is a perfect place to learn how to do this. Um, you'll want the yarn to be in front, as if you were going to purl, because what you're going to do... Let me zoom in. So my yarn is in front of my needle as if I'm going to purl. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to slip that stitch as if to purl to the right hand needle. Once I do that, I'm going to take my yarn 
and pass it back between those two needles. Tighten it up just a little bit and now I'm going to knit. So that's going to make a really pretty edge. I will show you. Let me get a couple stitches knit here. So for six rows we're going to do that at, at the edge and what you'll see is it makes a very pretty edge on the outside. You don't have all those nubs that you normally do with knitting. So I'm going to let you go ahead and knit those six stitches. Remember, bring your yarn in front as if to purl. Move the thread from the left needle to the right needle and then put your yarn in the back as if to knit and then you can knit that, that row. So go ahead and knit your six rows doing that and I'll check with you later. So I have my six knit stitches, my six knit rows and uh, this is what it looks like. On both sides it's pretty much the same. Now this is called the garter stitch there are two stitches that are called for a lot in knitting. One is the garter stitch and one is the stocking stitch. And they, they can throw new knitters quite a bit. And the easiest way that I've found to remember it when I was learning how to knit is a, a garter stitch. When, when girls used to wear garters instead of pantyhose, the garters were a little bit rough so that they could hold the top of the nylon so that it wouldn't slip and it was a, a rough edge so when you look at the garter stitch it's also a rough edge it's it's rough on both sides as opposed to when we do the stockinette stitch the, or the stocking stitch the stocking stitch is very smooth because the nylons you wanted them to look nice and smooth on your legs so a stocking stitch is a mixture of knit on one side and then we purl on the other side and you can see kind of the difference. This is a very rough edge and this is a very smooth edge. So that's a one good way to remember the difference between a stocking stitch and a garter stitch. So the other thing we're getting ready to do our next pattern and so the other thing that you need to be aware of is the first three stitches on each edge on, on the beginning edge and on the ending edge are going to be knit no matter which side you're on the front or the back. Now you're welcome to use stitch markers to show your place if that makes it easier for you. Three stitches isn't a lot to remember so I'm just going to go ahead and knit them and remember we make sure that we have the yarn in front as if we're going to purl. We move our stitch pull our yarn to the back as if we're going to knit. I tighten it up just a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and knit those next two stitches which gives me my three stitch edge. The pattern for this next part is um, a basic four row stitch, four row pattern. And for the first row we're going to knit two, purl two knit two, purl two. It's a repeat, knit two, purl two. So I'm going to go ahead and knit two, one, two, and then I'm going to purl the next two, one, two. And I'm just going to repeat that, knit two, purl two, until I get to the end. And once I get to the end, you remember that your last three stitches are going to be just plain knit. So go ahead and finish that pattern across your first row and I will be back to show you how to do your second row. Okay, so I'm at the end of my first row's pattern. I'm going to go ahead and knit those last three stitches. And we'll turn it and remember we're going to make a fancy nice edge so I'm going to make sure that my thread is in front of my needle as if to purl. I'm going to move the stitch from the left needle to the right needle as if to purl and then I'm going to tighten up my thread and knit those first three stitches. 
Now we're on the second row of our pattern. And this is where our handy dandy thumb finger would come in. I'm going to press it and it says two now. I don't know if you can see that. So the second row is the opposite of the first row. We're going to purl two stitches. And then knit two stitches. One, two. And they're going to do that the whole way through. Purl two, knit two. Purl two, knit two. And remember, at the end, our last three stitches will be knit. No matter what our pattern shows, we're going to knit those last three stitches. So go ahead and finish this second row, and I will meet you back here to show you the third row. All right. Okay, so I'm at the end of my second row, and again, I'm going to knit those last three stitches. One, two, three. I'm going to turn, and we're going to go ahead and move our first stitch to make our nice edge. Bring your yarn to the front of your needle. Move that first stitch to the right hand needle as if to purl. Put your yarn in the back and tighten it up. Knit your first three stitches. Well, knit your first, your, your two stitches because the first stitch is, is passed. So I'm going to go ahead and click my, uh, my, my, my stop clock and I'm on a row three. Now row three of the pattern is the same that we just did on the last one. It's purl two knit two, purl two, knit two. And what you'll begin to see is after the first four rows, you'll see a pattern start to emerge. Um, for those of you who purl differently than I do, don't worry, we'll take a lesson on this. Most of you, when you purl, you wrap this way, counterclockwise. I wrap clockwise because it gives my stitch a nicer, um, tighter. It's tight. I learned this when I was doing cable knitting because it makes your, your, your transitions between cables a little bit tighter. But don't worry about this for now because there are some tricks to it. For example, this was a purl stitch on this side. And when I get to this side, it's a knit stitch, but you can't knit in the front of your yarn you have to knit in the back so we'll we'll go ahead and we will take a a lesson on how to do this it really is a nice way to purl it makes it it makes it very 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 nice and tight makes everything just look a little bit nicer okay so go ahead and finish this first row remember that the last three stitches are knit and I'll get back with you for that fourth row pattern. And after that, you'll have the four row pattern that you'll just follow clear up about, um, uh, it's about an inch. We'll do that for about two or three times. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so I am, I am knitting my last of my three stitches on the left hand side. And you can see how nice that edge is becoming it's it's not messy like some knit projects okay i'm turning it and this will be row four and again we are going to put our yarn in the front of our needle as if to purl we're going to take the stitch from the left to the right hand needle as if to purl and then pull our yarn back we will knit our first two stitches after that, which makes us three stitches on the left of the right hand side. Okay, now this last row is the same as our first row. We're going to knit two, and then purl two, the whole way across. Knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. And 
what you'll find is it's going to give you this nice almost it's a small basket weave stitch and you can see the definition these are purled stitches and then the knits in between them it makes it look real pretty so in our next video we're going to go ahead and make this center part so go ahead and do this set of four about three times so you'll have a total of 12 stitches you can value out to zero for each set of four if you want to that makes it easier for some people but just remember that you're going to do three sets of the four row stitch okay i'll meet you back here later and we will start the next section of our dish towel it's looking nice okay so our pattern tells us to go ahead and repeat those four rounds, rows one, two, three, four is a round, repeat those three to four times, and then on the last round, just knit rows one, two, and three. Well, I always have a tendency to forget to stop at row three and I knit row four. So I, I realized that row one would, be, would work just as well. So what I'm gonna have you do is go ahead and knit row one again and then stop. Don't, don't don't follow through with rows two and three and four the next thing uh, and you can go ahead and do that and then you can start the video again um, the next thing that it tells us to do is to be on um, the back side so in order to figure out what is the back side and what is the front side when I've cast on, I have this nice little rib that kind of makes a dip. And when I turn it over, it dips this way down. This way dips up, this way dips down. Or it, you can go ahead and look at your, um, your tail. And once you realize that a wrong side row is with the tail coming out the right side, then as long as you remember that, you're okay so basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to knit row one i'm going to do row one and then i'll meet you back here